Hello and welcome to Network. My name is Spumelele Zondi. It was Safer Internet Day a few days ago. Tonight, we'll tell you what it means to be safe on the internet. We also have information on an organization that refurbishes old smartphones and sells them for almost half the price. Our discussion is on a new online currency. Pipcoin says it wants to rival Bitcoin. Find us on SABC Network on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. It's News Network at SABC. Does your does it own email. Let's start with your social media and technology news. Now, Safer Internet Day took place a few days ago. The day is to alert people about the dangers they can face if they don't ensure their activity on the internet remains private. Hackers are constantly trying to take money out of bank accounts and take over social media accounts to do malicious things. So we want to find out how we can be safe on the internet. A lot of research says you spend hours a day on social media. There's this, plus the time people spend browsing other sites, including doing their banking online. This could be done from public Wi-Fi hotspots. For instance, I'm in UJ and I understand that they have Wi-Fi. And I stand that they wouldn't put, they wouldn't give us an unsecure connection to use. I'm not very familiar with keeping my account secure. I just log in anywhere, any time. It doesn't, it's not something that I think very much about. I just use any internet, internet connection I find actually online. Many that do this think they have secured their private accounts, which is why they think they can't be infiltrated by third parties. I'm selective of what I click on. Why? Because I'm sometimes skeptical of if it's spam or something like that, or if it's going like, to transfer a virus into my account or something like that. I just put in whatever it is that I already have saved onto my laptop. I don't really double check or log out. But with the responses we've received in the past from some of our viewers, it's become evident that many accounts are not secure. I very often saw it, see it, that people log on to their bank accounts and do banking transactions from a coffee shop. Now the Wi-Fi in that coffee shop, I can give you a book, is insecure. It's most probably hacked. And the hacker is waiting in that Wi-Fi environment to see who's going sending information to the bank. And he intercepts that and you, you're, you're a goner. We constantly hear about suspicious links and smartphone applications that seem fascinating when they can lead us to being hacked. One of the biggest ways of attack today is by the apps. You, 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 you serve the internet, here's a nice app. That's really, it's a nice way which I can enhance my photographs. You download the app. That app may be infected with malicious software, with a virus. Now that virus is on your mobile phone. Now that virus may be, for example, check every keynote, keystroke that you make on your mobile phone. Now you log on from your mobile phone onto your bank account. The virus is sitting there and it's sending back to its master all your keystrokes for your bank. And suddenly you're compromised. Hackers trying to get into our accounts online could be looking for our money, our identities so they can commit fraud or be malicious people trying to torture us. What's important is that we do our utmost best to ensure that they can't get the information we save online easily. Technology and innovations are created to make our lives easier, but when they are used carelessly, they can be dangerous or sometimes fatal. We do may look at the file the following report for us. An average person picks up their cell phone about 110 times daily. Many do this when driving as well. Phone usage has become a significant distraction for many things, even jaywalking. Uh, you find that people are distracted at homes, people are distracted behind the wheel. So the growth of technology and the accessibility of technology has got its own advantages and equally it's got uh, negatives. And we know that many crashes, serious crashes where people die, where people lose their lives, is directly related to being distracted while you're driving and sadly it's texting. In the following video by the responsible young drivers from Belgium, trainee drivers are forced to drive and text. This is to show them the dangers of doing it on the road. All of them complained that it was too difficult. Discovery Insure in South Africa has created an app that monitors some drivers insured by the company. Interestingly, people who've joined the program 
while it was still a deep installed telematics, there's been a dramatic improvement in their driving over a period uh, since the inception and since they've joined the program. So we are happy that you've got sustained improvement. The dangers of mobile phones are not limited to texting and driving only. In the last few years, there have been reported cases of people taking selfies in dangerous places. A 16-year-old boy was killed by passenger train while taking a selfie in India. The teen reportedly walked in front of the train and waited for it to come closer before taking the photo. In Russia, a 17-year-old student fell to his death after attempting to take a selfie while hanging from a nine-story building. This has impelled the Russian government to come up with selfie guides. New technology is a big deal in a toy fair taking place in New York City in America. Toy makers have realized that kids of this generation are digital natives. As a result of that, they have responded with what they offer. The current 113 annual international toy fair in New York has a few digital offerings. Toy makers say this is because it's what kids want. Apart from Hot Wheels for boys, there are superheroes for girls. When we combine digital and physical play, we want to make sure it amplifies, doesn't take away from. So we're always looking for ways to creatively integrate. Um, and kids are fickle, so we want to make sure that we find new and exciting ways um, to delight them um, all year long. Digital toys based on Hollywood characters are big again in 2016. Well, it's an exciting toy fair because the year came off one of the best years ever. Uh, it was up about 3 to 4 percent overall in terms of sales, and the big reason was entertainment like Star Wars, Jurassic World, and Minions. This is going to be another big entertainment year, and most manufacturers are very excited looking that 2016 will be another good year for the toy business. There are some non-digital offerings as well. A survey shows that people are now flooding to the web to find love and Uber protests continue. This is what's been making tech headlines in the rest of the tech space. It's Valentine's Day today and like the Beatles song says, all you need is love. And now the internet has made it easy for people to find love. A survey by the Pew Research Center shows that more Americans are looking for love through online dating with more than four times as many young adults using mobile apps than in 2013. Uh, overall uh, usage of mobile dating apps has tripled uh, and among uh, the youngest adults, those 18 to 24, uh, it's increased more than fivefold. Uh, so uh, uh, today, uh, almost uh, one in five uh, 18 to 24 year olds uh, uses a mobile dating app uh, compared to just 5% who did so uh, in 2013. Though some may see the internet as a not so ideal platform to find this love, people like Jenny Dorsey, who met her husband on an online dating website, disagree with this notion. It's usually limited by how many people you can meet because, you know, um, at work, you know, you know, you have your circle of friends, you have your people that you know at work. But online you get to meet more people, so that was good. You can't like find people elsewhere because they're shy or not social, I mean, then they can go online and date, but besides that, I don't see the reason why. Now heading over to the Queensland. Taxi hailing application Uber never disappoints as it finds itself on news headlines yet again. This time, it had thousands of traditional black taxis blocking central London from Trafalgar Square to the Parliament on Wednesday in protest against car-sharing service app Uber and government pressure on the regulatory body. The protesting London taxi driver said that Uber avoids paying taxes and taxi regulations by presenting itself as an IT company. It's not about us being afraid of technology. All we're saying is that if you're going to use technology to do this job, you have to comply with the laws and regulations of the country. In January, London transport bosses decided not to impose strict new rules on Uber and private hire cars, despite a series of protests from the city's black cab drivers. Now heading over to California. Techies were honored at the Scientific and Technical Academy Awards, otherwise known as the SciTech Oscars. It's amazing, especially at this point in movie making where so much of it is done digitally. Um, more is done by these guys than you could ever possibly know, and that's sort of the magic of it. And, uh, it's nice to recognize them tonight because their job is sort of to be invisible when it comes to their on-screen work. 
The unsung heroes of Hollywood, the technology designers, were handed Oscars at an awards ceremony held in Beverly Hills, California on February 13th, almost two weeks prior to the actual Oscars event, which takes place on the 28th of the same month. It's SABC Network on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. News Network at SABC.co.za. Stay with us. We're going to talk digital currencies after the break. The big news is Newsroom. We also stream live on YouTube. Whether you're at home, at the office or at the gym, wherever you are, Newsroom is right there with you. Bringing you all the latest news, updates, sports, weather and everything in between. Get all the latest news you need on the go via live streaming on our YouTube channel. That's Newsroom, weekdays at 9am, only on the SABC News Channel. It's News Network at sabc.co.za on email. It's SABC Network on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thank you very much for being a part of our network tonight. Now, bitcoins are probably the most well-known virtual currency. While they can be exchanged for real money, they aren't accepted in most places. Bitcoins came under immense scrutiny after they were used to trade drugs in an online store, Silk Road. Now, there are others trying to create their own cryptocurrencies, like Stellenbosch-based Cypher Funks. Simon De La Rover has invented a visual currency called funk to enable people across the world to create music and to trade globally. Funk is part of cipher funks and there are currently 200 of these cryptocurrencies across the world. Consumers can exchange this visual currency to the rent or to the dollar. But it cannot be used currently as a medium of exchange in South Africa. You can do that currently on, on various online sites such as Twitter and Reddit and so forth, or, or that's a plan at least. And you can, if, if there are exchanges which you can take, take this virtual currency back into rands or dollars if, if you would want to use it in real life. But until that, uh, the, car, the infrastructure needs to be built is just to make it easier or less hoops to be able to say spend it at a store. Visual currency is not regulated by the Reserve Bank, so it can be open to abuse. The central bank says a visual currency poses a number of risks for those who choose to transact with it. There's no guarantee of security and value. However, the Reserve Bank says it is actively monitoring developments around visual currencies that will inform any future regulatory approaches that might be necessary within South Africa. Cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin are decentralized. They cannot be controlled. It's a peer-to-peer -peer currency. Um, the network itself sustains the currency, the network of people using it. So it's not something that can be easily controlled or regulated. Visual currencies actively used in developed countries such as the UK and the United States. But the world's second largest economy, China, has been very reluctant to adopt it, citing security and safety concerns. Analysts are skeptical as to whether a visual currency will someday be used as an alternative means of transacting and economic interaction in South Africa. Now, trader Rev Wayne says he's created another South African virtual currency. He calls it Pipcoins. He wants Pipcoins to rival Bitcoins. Hello, Rev and thank you for being a part of our network. Yes, uh, uh, hello to you too. Uh, yeah. Now, you're 20 years old and you yes. say you made your first million at 19 years old yes. from trading. Yes. Is that where the idea of Pipcoins came from? Yes, uh, the idea of Pip, actually, the word Pip comes from trading. In uh, trading terms, we don't call it money. We don't say we made $5, five no, we said we made five pips. So pip actually comes from uh, trading. For All right, example. so that's where the name came from. Yes, but where, yeah. where did the idea of creating your own virtual currency come from? That idea actually has actually been started a long time ago. 
the mathematics and algorithms were actually uh, began starting being, uh, being set up by, by my mentor, David Schwartz. So David Schwartz was someone that took me in and out of uh, trading. And he used to say something like, I see a new generation, I see a new generation. As you can see, there's a, uh, the motto, the new generation in the, in the Pipcoin logo. So I think that is when he started to influence me. And only till recently I started to see this is what he was saying. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, he did pass away. Now I carry just the legacy now. Mm. Uh, and, and now we already have Bitcoins. Yes. And they've been gaining traction for at mm. least the last two to three years. Mm. So what makes yours different? Ex exclusivity. When you talk about something that's exclusive, it has its own trading platform. Now with comparing it to Bitcoin, Bitcoin, by the way, was an experiment. Uh, the founder of Bitcoin, Satoshi Nakamoto, uh, started Bitcoin as an experiment just to see how where the world will accept digital currency as like. So out of that experiment, I can say Bitcoin now is finally uh, taking that experiment now, saying this is the final product. How? By concluding the network. So I went through the algorithms and the systems behind Bitcoin. I said, now this is what I would like to modify and change and make it more secure, exclusive is what makes it different. Mm. Um, uh, maybe if we can, uh, the inserts mm. that we played tried yeah. to explain what uh, a virtual currency actually yes. is. Maybe if we can just do that. And in simpler terms, what is a virtual currency? A virtual currency is a digital currency. This is an internet currency. It's not tangible. You cannot just buy maybe five Bitcoins and you want to see it tangible. It's a digital currency. It works through people. People own the currency. That is why our motto is Bitcoin, the people's currency. Because now you are the owner of the currency. Without you, the currency does not exist. You are the printer of the currency. It's digital. Uh, can I exchange it for money? I know with Bitcoins, yes. there are ATMs now in Hong Kong and, yes. and Canada. Yes. With a Bitcoin, can I exchange it for money? Definitely so. That is why we are the only system right now in Africa. That is why I went as far as saying we are one of Africa's first digital currencies who are now going to be in the same level rivaling with Bitcoin. How? Because we are now introducing our own uh, debit card, our own MasterCard which now says that you can transfer from your wallet to your debit card and spend it anytime. So what happens? How do I get this PIPcoin? This PIPcoin has its own website, the pipcoins.co.za uh, or pipcoin.co.za, you can just go there. And then there we've got our own web platform. You can purchase pip, uh, PIPcoins. You can also, at the same time, what is most likely to happen, you find people having their own uh, Bitcoins. You can now, with Bitcoins, exchange them to Bitcoins and start using our own uh, uh, currency now in mm. Africa. Mm. Uh, Rev Wayne, our first incident tonight was yeah. about um, fraud that takes place mm. online. How do I know yes. that this is not just a, a, a fraudulent scheme, a scheme mm. rather, that, that wants to take money out of my pocket? I go on this website, mm. I purchase Bitcoins, mm. and suddenly I've lost money, <laughs> never to get it back. How do I know uh, this? That we call it the most important system, a P2P network structure. That is what we call a decentralized exchange. There's proof of work that you are the sole owner of the Bitcoin. How? You are purchasing from someone else, from his computer, not from a central exchange, where you are paying now Ref Wayne uh, to buy. No, not paying from me. You are paying from someone else who is right now in uh, acquisition of that Bitcoins. That makes it sure that there's no one that can run away here. There's no system that can shut, shut down. It's a peer-to-peer, friend-to-friend system, a mm. network. Referring, uh, Bitcoins have had a few problems in the past. Yes. Um, there was a time when they stopped trading for a very short mm -hmm. uh, period of time. Um, there was a time when, they, uh, when their value dropped, um, especially after Silk Road, after people were purchasing mm -hmm. um, illegal substances on, on the website Silk Road. Mm -hmm. uh, how do I trust this particular method? That is why now, uh, Bitcoin was an experiment and with that experiment I went through the coding, the algorithm, uh, the programming, I started to see uh, faults Then I said now this is the fault. First of all you cannot track uh, Bitcoin. If someone steals your Bitcoin right now you must forget. If someone hacks into your Bitcoin hello, uh, wallet right now you must forget. Why? Because Bitcoin is an open source. Open source means anyone can use it. Now in Bitcoin we have now secured our infrastructure. How? We have serial codes. If your Bitcoin gets lost, we can track it down. Fraud, uh, theft, and anything that has to do with cyber crimes, we can track it. How? With that serial code. We can see exactly what happened, what went to it, and track it down. Mm. What's the value of one Bitcoin? A hundred rand right now. 
Okay, so one coin is a hundred rand, yes. and what can I? Where can I buy b- goods with it? How? Where do I yes. use it? Uh, right now, since it's a new uh, digital currency, we've had uh, some stores, online stores, e-commerce stores coming to us, ask, asking us to integrate our API, uh, which is our application uh, interface to their websites so that they can accept it as a payment. As for now, people has been, have been buying and selling to each one another and through supply and demand, it's just skyrocketing. All right, Reverend, thank you very much for joining yes. us. <laughs> Thanks so much. All right, Reverend is the founder of a virtual currency, Pipcoin, joining us there. Now it's SABC Network on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Stay with us. <laughs> Get all the latest news from the SABC's online news services on our website. Breaking news and in-depth coverage of everything from business, sports to politics and lifestyle. Catch the top news clips and watch live streaming of major news events on the SABC News YouTube channel whenever. Stay connected on the SABC News Facebook page and have your say on news that matters to you. And for the latest headlines and live updates from our reporters, follow us on Twitter. SABC Digital News, anytime, anywhere. find us on email we are on info we are on news network rather at sabc news dot co dot za that is a news network at sabc dot co dot za now an app that gives motorists the option not to use parking tickets to get through shopping center boom gates has been recently launched and producer Levo Sijake tried it out and says that it is a keeper i got a chance to try out the newly launched car parking mobile app Kaching. You're probably asking yourself how this app helps one park a car. Well, I caught up with one of the creators of this application, Yako Marai, to answer this question. It's very simple. You download the application from either the iOS or the Google Play Store. You go through the registration process. During that process, you give me your license plate number. And the moment you give that to me, I have cameras at the entries and exits of malls. And as you drive in, I open the boom for you. You go and park, you shop around. And if you want to exit, the boom opens again. And I deduct the money from either your linked credit card account or the prepaid wallet that we have. Kaching went live on Android and on iOS operating systems on February 9th. I downloaded the app on the day and have since used it without any hassle. What I mostly like about this application is that it does not require that I save my banking details like in other service-related apps such as Uber or Amazon. One can choose the top-up option instead of saving credit card details on the app, which is one of the reasons I give it two thumbs up. Though live and fully functional, Kaching parking app is only active in a few selected parking lots, which are in Campus Square, Melrose Arch and Morningside Shopping Centres. Right, let's see what some people are sharing on social media. Dominating social media, different hashtags about the proteas who were dominant over England. The South Africans have been playing England in a one-day international match in Newlands in Cape Town. South Africa got 237 for five in the end, winning by five wickets. Valentine's Day has been another hot topic on social media. Many have been celebrating, but there were cynics there too. Kanye West's new song, Ultra Light Beams, has been a popular chatting point. Many love the rapper's new song. The song features a chance the rapper, The Dream, Kelly Price and Kirk Franklin. And that's all we have for you. Find us on SABC Network on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. It's News Network at SABC.co.za on email. We leave you with visuals celebrating Valentine's Day. From me and the rest of the network team, have a good one. No one you can save that can't be saved. Nothing you can do, but you can learn how to be in time. It's easy.